Brothers and sisters, on this week of Christian unity, when we are invited to pray for unity among Christians throughout the world and for unity among Christian communities and denominations, I invite you to reflect on how we can bring unity in the church today, in our families, the domestic church, in every organization that is Christian, in our dioceses, in our religious congregations, at the Vatican, the Holy See, in our chanceries, everywhere. One of the unwritten rules of the early church was that if you want to know the health of any Christian community, the answer is simple. Find out in that community what is it that they are fighting over. If it is of God, that's a good fight. It would be nice that people fight over who will say the highest number of rosaries. I fasted for five days, you know. Why should we fast for 10 days and not, and not for 20? Now we saw, we see the second reading today, which forms the focus of our reflection. St. Paul writing to the Corinthians says, why this division among you? Why? This person says, I am for Paul, I am for Apollos, I am for Cephas, I am for Jesus. And he says, is the body of Jesus divided? The inner robe of Jesus on the cross was not broken, was not torn apart as a sign of the unity of the church. And Jesus prayed that, that they may be one just as you and I, Father, are one. So the early church had this measure of the spirituality and morality of the Christian community that they must be contesting over how to be better Christians. In the first century, what were they fighting over? It was about proclamation of the good news. It was about charity. The first main fight in the early church in Acts of the Apostles was about distribu distribution of charity, that widows and orphans and the poor were being neglected. Then, towards the second century, it was the fight over persecution, martyrdom. Those who escaped when the persecutors came, and then after persecution, they came back into the church. Should we admit them still as Christians, or should we rebaptize them? That was what they were fighting over. In the third and fourth century, it was about who is Jesus so that I may follow him. I want to know him in whom I have, I will put my faith. Is Jesus God? That was what they were fighting over in our times. We can ask ourselves, what is it that is creating the division in the church today? Whenever the church concentrates on these important matters that was central to the ministry of Jesus, the priorities of Jesus, the church grew in spirituality. It grew in influence, not political influence, not economic influence, but in moral and spiritual transformation. Because that is what the world is looking for from the church. What Jesus brought to us is not economic power, Jesus brought God to us. In our time, we must ask ourselves the questions. Just like Paul asked the Corinthians, why the division among you? Why are we tearing each other apart? Why are we criticizing each other? Why are we divided? The scandal of a divided church in our parishes, in our dioceses, in our Christian families, what is it that is dividing the church? I think if we search our souls, we will be truthful to ourselves that what is dividing the church today 
is not similar to what is what was creating the tension and division in the early church. Is what is dividing the church today about who is Jesus, about how to lift up the poor, about how to care for those who are sick? Is it about how to proclaim the good news to the ends of the earth, like the early church in the first century? Is it about martyrdom? How can I lay down my life for Jesus, if not in blood, but white martyrdom, by making sacrifice for the good of God's kingdom? Is the fight in the church today about how to go to heaven, eternity? Is it about service? No. For the most times, the battles in the church today is about power. The rivalries that Paul talked about to the Corinthians in our churches today. Is it about who is going to say the rosary? Who is going to do the stations of the cross? I like to see in rectories where the priests are fighting over. Oh, he does every time he is doing holy hour. Every time he is visiting the sick. Why won't he let me visit the sick? Rather than the fight over money. The fight over who is going to be what. Over titles. Titles that do not take us to heaven. I like to see families who are fighting and going to meet priests over Oh, our family, every day, he's always praying. Why can't he give us time, give time for other things? I mean, I'm not exaggerating here, but you get the point. That our fight in the parish, our fight in the church, in our families, the tension should not be about these passing realities. It should be about things that really matter, so that we can discern together how we can do the will of God. And that is why the message of the gospel rings clear to us. Repent and believe the good news. We need to ask the Lord to change our minds so that we can think like Jesus. To change our hearts so that we can feel like Jesus. To change our whole being so that our whole focus will be about evangelization about changing the world and proclaiming the gospel to the world that is in need of this truth, that is in need of this saving reality. But when we are a divided church, our message will be confusing to the faithful. Let us pray that God may give the gift of unity to the church, not only to the universal church, but also the domestic church, families, church organizations, May we all pray every day for the gift of repentance and for the gift of unity so that they may be one as you and I are one. <laughs>